Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna go through all of my favorite things for running my small business or just things that have improved my life immensely as someone who does art and content creation full time. I'm gonna cover everything like my favorite camera equipment, art supplies, books, furniture, tech, even my favorite plants. So let's get started. So I am a bit of a camera nerd. As you can see, I have a lot of camera equipment. I think just the nature of my job means that I become a nerd about tech. One of the first things that I actually really invested in was a microphone. You might've seen this microphone around everywhere. This is the Rode Wireless Go 2. This is by far my favorite wireless microphone that I've ever tried. A lot of YouTubers use a microphone like this. This was my first one, it's the Rode Mic Pro. This has really good sound quality. But the thing about this is that it's only one direction. So if I'm talking to it, it'll sound good. But if I'm behind the camera, all of a sudden the audio is not so good. With this microphone, I can just clip it onto my shirt. I usually wear a tank top under my sweaters. So I clip it onto my tank top so you can't even see it. And that way I can also be super far from the camera and still be heard clearly. This is also my favorite thing because I have a pretty quiet voice. And I noticed that with a traditional microphone, I had to like speak really loudly and it would strain my throat. So now I can talk comfortably. My favorite camera to film with is the one I'm holding right here. It's a Sony ZV-E10. This is by far my favorite camera that I've ever used. It shoots in 4K, but it's also really small. So this is how it usually looks in my studio and it doesn't take up too much space. Regarding camera lenses, I mostly either use one of these two. I'd say like 95% of the time, I'm using this 10 to 20 millimeter lens from Sony because for vlogging, I find it really useful to have a wide angle to get as much into the shot as I can. So this is perfect for that. And my favorite lens to use while sculpting is this 18 to 135 millimeter lens. It starts at 18, which is moderately wide, but then it can go all the way up super, super close. And I use this whenever I want a really close up shot of my polymer clay sculpting. Another camera that is recently my favorite and kind of went viral on TikTok is the DJI Pocket 3. It's definitely not an essential, but it's just so fun to use. The quality is pretty on par with the Sony camera, but it's like a third of the size. So it's really good for traveling. And I just love how many accessories it has. Like if I wanted to add a wide angle lens, I can just pop it on because it's a magnet. It even comes with its own wireless microphone. So you can clip it onto your shirt as well and have really good audio quality. I use this camera at the airport when I went to visit my family in Houston. I even used it to film some TikToks and it's such a joy to use. The only thing is that I can't really clip it onto any of my tripod so I do feel a little limited in that but if I'm traveling I'm mostly just holding it the whole time anyway okay here are the last two things for filming equipment my two favorite tripods I know it sounds a little extra to have two favorite tripods but hear me out this is the tripod that I've used since I first started my channel three years ago I've invested in super expensive tripods before that were super durable super heavy weight but I just found them to be way too heavy if you're filming YouTube videos and you're changing the angle a lot you're trying to get different angles you're moving around a lot if the tripod tripod is too heavy, it will just hurt my wrists and will make me not want to film as much. But this one is super lightweight. It's just the Amazon Basics one, but it is my holy grail. And this tripod is more of a recent favorite. This is for when I'm filming TikToks on my phone. This one is also super lightweight, and I love how you can change the angle from horizontal to vertical really easily. I use this tripod quite a lot as well, and I love how you can just fold it up really, really small and just put it away out of sight. And I think that's it for camera equipment. I know it seems like a lot, but like I said earlier, I'm a camera nerd and I obviously invested in these things over time as my business grew. I think it's really important to invest back into your business in the form of making better content because if I can make better YouTube videos, better TikToks, that just means I can promote my art even more. And speaking of making better YouTube videos, I'm always on the hunt to learn new things about content creation and I've been doing that through Skillshare. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry leaders and people that I personally really admire. One of them is Ali Abdul. He's featured in Skillshare's learning path called Grow Your First YouTube Channel and he has such tremendous valuable advice on how to succeed in YouTube. Things that I'm implementing in this video right now, such as writing a brief script, usually a list before shooting a video. This year, invest in yourself and in your goals by starting a learning journey through Skillshare. And if you're not sure where to start, the learning paths that I mentioned earlier curates all the classes for you in which order to take 
make them so that each class helps you build onto the other, reinforcing what you've learned to really take you to that next step. And it even sorts it from experience level so it ranges from beginner all the way up to advanced. Learning Paths is available for a variety of categories including design, productivity, marketing, video editing, and way more. The first 500 people to use the link in my description will receive one free month of Skillshare. Again, that's one month of Skillshare for free, so get started today. Similar to camera gear, this is just my favorite tech in general. I get a lot of questions on what headphones I use, and these are the Bose QuietComfort 45s. I've had these for over two years now, and they still look amazing. This might be a niche problem, but my ears stick out quite a bit, but these go over them really comfortably, and I can edit for 10 hours straight, and it doesn't hurt my head, which is so important for me. Having a good pair of headphones is just super important no matter what your occupation. I use these every day. I barely have to charge them. I use them while I sculpt, while I edit, when I work out. The sound quality is amazing. Sometimes because I live in the city, when I'm out walking or if I'm out on my patio, I'll just put these on simply to muffle out all the city noises because downtown is so noisy. I get pretty overstimulated, so I'll just put these on and I won't even play any music, but it just brings me so much peace. These are just... They're so good. The next favorite is my keyboard. I get a lot of questions about this as well, even though I consider myself a clay artist first. Obviously, I still have to spend a lot of time at my computer, whether it's for editing or just doing admin works. So having a keyboard that I really love to use just brightens up my day. This is the Kitas NJ80 with yellow Gatorion switches, and it sounds like this. Okay, so this one might seem a little random, but let me get you guys on a portable SSD. If you're making videos for your art, for your business, you're gonna need some sort of external storage to hold onto all of that footage. For example, these are my two external hard drives that I've gone through, but look how much smaller this SSD is. This is a hard drive, this is an SSD. This SanDisk one is two terabytes and is by far the most portable thing I've ever used. It's also really fast. I feel like with this one from La Cie, it's it took a lot longer for my files to load, but this one, it doesn't take any time at all. So I highly, highly recommend this one. The next thing I wanted to talk about was my wireless label printer. When I first started my small business, I would literally print out each shipping label and cut them out and tape them on by hand. I remember forcing Mr. Uncomfy to do it and it just took so long. If you're running a small business, you honestly just don't wanna be wasting your time doing stuff like that. Especially when you get to the point where you're packing 50, 100 items at once, printing all those labels and cutting them out will take up so much of your time. So please listen to me and invest in a thermal label printer. It doesn't take any ink. It just needs special paper. And once it prints, you peel it off and stick it onto your package and you're good to go. I used the original Rolo printer for years and I really liked that one. The quality was really good. You could still read the addresses and numbers even if it was printed small. But then I moved and I dropped it and I broke it. So then I upgraded to this pink wireless one. And honestly, having a wireless printer is such a game change in itself. It also it saves me so much time, it saves me so much space because I don't have to find space for all these wires and it's so seamless and I love it. If you saw my last video, you probably saw me use this Cricut Joy Extra. <laughs> I'm holding it like a baby. I feel like a couple years ago when I first started my business, everyone had the Cricut Explore Air or the Cricut Maker. They are these like gigantic machines. They honestly make a ton of noise and I just didn't have the space for it anymore. But this one is just small enough. Like if you simply want to make stickers or sticker sheets, all you need is this one and I think it's a bit cheaper too. All right, that's it for tech Now I want to talk about general studio favorites like things in my studio that just make my life so much better First studio favorite are these bamboo shelves that I got off Amazon to me This is the epitome of utility meets aesthetic just to clarify like this is one shelf and this is another Editing Tammy will correct me if I'm wrong, but I think each shelf was only like 50 or 60 dollars They were pretty easy to build and I think it just adds so much to the space. I also love how it serves as a divider between my workspace and my living space. Like here, I'm definitely in my workspace. I'm definitely going to be crafting or editing, but here I'm at home. I'm chilling. I'm relaxing. Another huge component of my studio space are my plants. This kind of plant is called a pothos and they are by far my favorite to buy and cultivate. This is my very first pothos. I named her Dawn and I got her like four years ago and look how big she's gotten. 
She drapes all the way across the back, all the way down here. And this pothos is named Dusk and she's also starting to drape down as well. Pothos are my favorite plant because they are so freaking easy to take care of. You can find them mostly anywhere that sells plants and they're not that expensive. Whether it's sunny or cloudy in your room, they'll thrive. Like Dawn was with me when I was at my parents' house and we had no direct sunlight at all and she still grew really fast. If you forget to water them, it's fine. I literally left to Italy for three weeks and three weeks later without any water, she was still alive. They're also super easy to propagate, so you don't have to keep buying new plants. I just think they're so beautiful. They're easy to take care of. It's good for your health to have some house plants with the added bonus that they make the perfect backdrop for any video. My next favorite probably has to be my standing desk from FlexiSpot. If you work any type of sedentary job where you're sitting all day, you need to start standing. I swear it's made the biggest difference on my energy levels more than anything else, like more than exercising or even sleeping more. And this desk is just perfect for me. It's long enough to where I can have my computer and two lamps on each side so that I can sculpt late into the night, but it's also deep enough so that I can have all of this here, but still have enough space to work on my art. But yeah, if you want to invest in a standing desk, it doesn't have to be this one. There's a lot of other cool ones out there, but just the ability to stand while I'm working is such a game changer. Maybe it was all my part-time jobs, like being a waitress trained me to be able to stand all day. But if I'm sitting all day, like my back hurts so much. My brain feels all foggy and I get so tired so fast. In tandem with the standing desk though, I wouldn't be able to stand all day if I didn't have these slippers. If you search up cloud slippers on Amazon, these will come up and they are so comfortable. And this way I don't have to invest in like a floor mat. I can just wear these. I don't know. I just think everyone needs a good pair of slippers and these are the most comfortable ones I have. Now we're on to the bread and butter of this video, which is art supplies. These are just like my very favorite things that I love using. If you want to know literally everything I use for Palmer clay. I have a separate video for that. You can click it right up here. In no particular order, this is by far my favorite resin that I've ever used. It is the Mr. Resin Premium Craft Resin. I've used the low viscosity as well as the medium viscosity, and I think they both work just as well. I had to learn the hard way that the type of resin that you use really, really matters. The difference between a good resin and a bad resin is that the good resin will stay crystal clear for years. Like this resin that I used was good. These pieces are over four years old and they haven't yellowed at all. Like the radish is still white. But then I switched resins because the first resin I was using took too long to cure. And this was a faster curing resin, but four years later, look how yellow they look. This one got especially bad the thicker I put the resin on. And I was so devastated when I realized that the resin I got yellowed. But this brand is my new holy grail. Not only does it cure fast, but it doesn't yellow over time. I actually found this resin through the artisan keycap community. And I just really trust those people because they are very, very meticulous about their keycaps. So if an artisan keycap maker is using this resin, you know it's good. Another must have for me is this pasta roller from Michaels. I just read the reviews on this and a lot of people think it's actually really bad, but it serves my purposes really well. Just to clarify, this is a pasta roller for polymer clay only. It's super useful for rolling out super thin slabs of clay, but it's also super useful to mix different colors of clay together. So most colors of polymer clay are super bright and vivid like this, but just like painting, it's good practice to mix your own colors to better suit your aesthetic and the look that you're going for. This thing was like $30, it's lasted me years and it will continue to last me years and years to come. It's also saved me a ton of time because mixing polymer clay with just your hands takes forever. For sculpting on top of, I love using a gigantic glass slate. Unfortunately, I stole this from my parents' house, so I have no idea where they got this. I'm pretty sure it was actually part of a coffee table, but if you go to a thrift store and you find a really big picture frame, you can just take the glass from that, um, put some scotch tape around it so that you don't cut your hands, and that is a perfectly good sculpting surface as well. You can also use it as a palette for like oil painting or watercolor painting, and that's actually where I learned this trick from was from my painting class. When I sculpt my miniatures, I also need to hold something to sculpt on top of. So these are called acrylic stamping blocks. You can get them on Amazon. I just got this one from Daiso and it's just the perfect thing to hold while you're sculpting. And they also look really good in photos. You can also use just like a plain old jar. I actually use this most of the time because it's a little more ergonomic for me. I'm not having to like strain my fingers to hold a flat item. But as you can see, it's like a little dirty, a little gross. So when I'm trying to film a video or take photos, I'm using an acrylic stamping block. And you may be wondering, where does Tammy even store all of this stuff? Well, right here. 
This tub that I got from Michaels is where I store most of my polymer clay supplies. Fun fact, I used to carry this around my college campus so that I could sculpt in between my classes. I love how it has this little divider, so I have the bulk big storage on the bottom. I can also store my tools and smaller items at the top. This little scale is also super nice to have. Having a scale to weigh out each ball of clay is how I make all my pieces so consistent. Like a lot of my things, I also like how small it is so it doesn't take up too much space and it's really accurate too. I think it weighs up to the hundredth of a gram. Okay, now we're on to some fun random things. This is a heated eye mask. Basically just plug it in and it warms like your eyes and it's so soothing and it's also really good for your eyes. Because of the nature of my job, like I'm sculpting tiny things all day, I'm editing on my computer all day, so my eyes are very, very dry because of it. So one thing I've been doing is using a heated eye mask every night and the heat like helps to melt the oil glands that are in your eyelid so that you can lose lubricate your eyes more easily, if that makes sense. But yeah, having a heated compress for your eyes is so important and this helps me fall asleep a lot faster too. Speaking of eye health, these are my prescription glasses from iBuyDirect in the style Sixto. And this one is for all my girlies with low nose bridges. Like mine is so low, it's basically not there. I've found through trial and error that glasses with like the nose pads just don't work for me. Like it has to be a basic frame like this. These are prescription glasses, but they're also blue light deflecting. I use these every day. They don't fall off my nose and they are huge and adorable and they're comfortable. Like they don't slip off my face like every other glasses does. Another random favorite of mine is wearing clothes that get me in the mood of creating. So this is a smock that I got from a boutique in Steamboat Springs, which is like a mountain town in Colorado. It makes me feel like I'm an Animal Crossing character and it's this denim material that I've never seen before. I believe it's handmade by these women in Thailand and the organization that sells these supports the woman that helps get them housing for their kids and it's really wholesome. So because of that, it was pretty expensive, but I've been trying to invest in more pieces that will last me forever. And my last favorite that I wanted to talk about was books. Last year, I got back into reading and it's truly been life-changing for the better. I'm no longer doom scrolling as much on my phone as I used to. Now I'm reading wholesome stories that fill my cup. I talked about this book in my small business advice video, but basically if you're in a creative rut, if you're trying to kickstart your creative career, if you've been trying to be a creative for years and years and it hasn't worked out, this is the book that will help you achieve your goals. Some people live by atomic habits. I live by the artist's way. Love for Imperfect Things by Heyman Sunim is one of my favorite books of all time as well. Mr. Uncomfy got this for me like three years ago and as you can see, is really beaten up by water damage, unfortunately, but I still love her to death. It's written by a Buddhist monk and has little stories and excerpts and just pieces of advice that he's taken from his life and it's so wholesome and every time I read it, it makes me feel more light and airy. It also has beautiful illustrations, so I imagine if you're an illustrator or an artist, this will bring you so much joy and inspiration. These next two books aren't necessarily self-help, but they definitely shaped my personality. Surprise, surprise, they're the most popular books of last year. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow is literary fiction, and it's about these two best friends. You follow them through the course of their lives, their relationship, the breaking of the relationship, and the mending of the relationship, and it's so beautiful. Like, I cannot stop thinking about these characters, and the reason why I'm putting this in my favorites is because you need to be consuming other types of art other than your medium. It'd be so bad for my mental health if I was just watching other Palmer Clay creators because I would just be comparing myself to them. Sorry. And scrolling on social media all day isn't good for you as well because you'll just compare yourself to them as well. But reading, like the act of reading other characters' lives helps develop a sense of empathy that you can put into your artwork. Like back when I was in graphic design school, the big buzzword for design was empathy. To be able to make good designs for someone else, you need to be able to put yourself in their shoes. And if I was a design professor, I would definitely assign this type of literature to my students. Crying in H Mart is a memoir about Michelle Zauner Zoner? Zoner? Basically, her mom passes away due to cancer and it is so, so sad. As her mom passes away, Michelle has to find a way to connect with her Korean culture without her mom being there. I'm gonna start sobbing. It just made me appreciate my parents so much more and thinking about this book is one of the things that convinced me to start taking Vietnamese lessons so that I can learn the language and hopefully connect with my culture um, well into the future. <sighs> Oh my gosh. I think that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, comment down below. I hope you liked this video and we'll see you next time. Bye.
Rusty red on her shoulder I was cleaning her shoe When it clicked on the trot over In the bright morning dew We brushed and we braided 